In this video, I'm going to go over the update to Pad Motion. So this is Pad Motion 3.0. I'm just going to quickly go over some of the new features and the things that we added into this library. So we'll start on the simple page. This is for the grain and sample layer. At the top, we've added uh, filter options for the low pass t uh, filter and the high pass filter up here. Um, going down, we've also condensed it. So if you're familiar with pad motion already, then you'll know that we used to have it to where these layers at the top, the first layer was sample, the second layer is grain. Um, we've condensed it now and made it a bit easier so that you can switch between sample and grain in one layer. This also makes it easier instead of like if you wanted to have a preset that had two layers of granular synthesis, uh, before you may have had to either load an init patch that already had that or you had to search through all the presets and find, okay, which one has two layers of grain. Uh, this way you don't have to do that anymore. If you have a preset that has two layers, uh, you can just go to the other one and switch to grain. And there you go. Um, so we think that's <laughs> a much more efficient solution to uh, compared to the way we had it before. Um, another thing we've added is you'll notice these graphics over the rates for the LFOs. Uh, we did this because it's just a bit easier to see what's going on. Um, if you're in a hurry, you're tweaking something, and you have some things being modulated at, you know, 16th note or an 8th note, um, and instead of having to go through, hover your mouse over to see the value or discern what it is from the value in the middle, uh, you can just easily see, okay, this one's going at an 8th note, I wanted to change that, or I just wanted to turn that off. So hopefully that will also help as you go on about tweaking the instrument. Let's go to the advanced page. Something we also added is a new modulation. Uh, we added a gate up here. You'll find it under the motion section. So you have the LFOs for the volume LFO and the pan LFO. We can go to the gate. This is fixed to the volume. So you don't have a destination to choose from as it's fixed already. Um, if you're familiar on the motion page with our step modulators, it has pretty much the same functionality. So the amount goes from zero to 100. So zero obviously doesn't affect it at all. Uh, 100, it does. I think it defaults to 50. Um, so that's halfway. You have the triplet function. We have the note value. So right now it's at 16th. You have the snap that just affects the grid up here. And then you have, oops, then you have the steps. So you can adjust how many steps you want in there and it goes up to 32. You can change the slope from none to rising, falling, or all, and the slope amount. We have a sync mode for it. And then you can also uh, shift the pattern to the right, to the left, or reverse it. So that's a new feature that is exclusive to pad motion at the moment. Um, and you'll find that on both the sample and grain layers and on the synth layers. So let's kind of go over the preset naming for the gate. As you can see, the naming looks a little cryptic. What we did, instead of giving it you know, specific names um, that were more abstract, that didn't really tell you what they were, this is just kind of a beat pattern. So this first one that my mouse is highlighting here, it, uh, this is gonna be four on the floor. So just one, two, three, four. Perfect, and now let's go to the next one. So this looks very similar, however, it changes now over here. The way you'd read this is one, two, three, and. Uh, one, two, three, and. And so we tried to make it easy, so instead of you having to go through and click each one to see what it sounds like or see what the pattern is, this may help you discern what it is before you click on it and help you uh, narrow down the rhythmic value that you want from this. Another function we added here is this multiplier and divider for the user envelopes. So at the moment, um, let's pick something. Let's pick this one. So it's half, so it's at a half note. The grid's at a half note for this. Let's say you quickly wanted to change it to a quarter note. Before, you'd have to painstakingly go through here and change these to the grid uh, to reflect a quarter note. Now, instead, what we can do is we can just say, okay, uh, I would like to divide this pattern into two. Now it's at a quarter. 
That's a lot easier than the way it would have been before. If you wanted to go back, uh, just now divide by two. You're back to where you were. Another thing important to note about this function is that when you choose another parameter here, whatever it be, so if I chose times three, it's gonna multiply this by three. And if I chose divided by three, it's gonna divide this by three. So for example, if I did, let's, let's say I um, divided by three. And then I, I said, oh, you know what? Uh, actually, I want to I wanted to divide it by four instead of three. Um, and then I hit divide by four. Um, what it did is it took what we had before and then divided by four. It didn't take the default that we started out with and divide that by four. That's just important to note because you might get yourself confused by doing that. Um, so just work your way back and then we'll be back at the quarter where we were. So that kind of wraps it up for the sample and grain layer. Let's go over to the synth layers. Again, if you're familiar with pad motion already, you will notice that we've simplified the synth layer before you had the analog modeled synth as one layer and the wavetable as another layer up here. We've condensed this. This is good because it's also reduced uh, a bit on the CPU consumption for the instruments that were four layers or that hosted um, both synths. Uh, this way you can have a bit more control over that and again when you're browsing through presets and you wanted something with the analog modeled synth uh, you'd have to either go and load the four layer init patch or uh, you'd have to find something that did utilize that layer this way you can just load the init patch or it's easy just to find something that has the synth layers in them and then uh, tweak from there so the oscillator is your analog modeled synth the wavetable is your wavetable synth. The wavetable has over 1,100 presets you can choose from, so it has plenty of content um, to get a different sound or timbre or whatever you're looking for. We have a sub oscillator and a noise oscillator, and this is the simple page, so it doesn't show all the functionality, but we can go over to this page, and here are all your other parameters for both synths. All right, um, so that kind of wraps it up for a lot of the new the GUI changes and some of the more efficiency that we added. Uh, there's a lot more content in Padmotion 3.0. That includes over 220 new uh, sample sources for sample and grain, and it also includes over 600 new presets in Padmotion 3.0. So you're getting a lot more content and uh, hopefully a lot more efficiency as you'll see it. All right, thanks. Uh, we should have a patch walkthrough. If you want to check out what it sounds like, uh, you can go on over to that video.